Thank you.
friends. I am Joseph from Rusova Nova in Romania. And she is my wife, Stanka. We come to Rusova now 20 years ago and since then. I am leader of the church for this village. We want to thank you for all your support in these years and we pray to the God for you. My God bless you and if is God willing be meet again sometimes. We send you greetings from here and we send a big hug. God bless you. Okay. Hello dear brothers and sisters. We are Andrew okay. and Daniela and this is our one year old daughter Emma. I have met Brian and Christine Mitchell during a medical mission in Rusova back in 2010 and had the opportunity of being sponsored by our church through my high school and university years. Together we visited Bransgore Community Church in 2013 and had the joy of meeting some of you during a lovely summer holiday we had in the UK. We send our love and prayers during this especially difficult time. May the Lord keep you safe, strengthen you in your struggles, and bless you with peace. Hopefully, we'll get to visit again sometime. Have a lovely day. Hello, brothers and sisters from um, Brazil Community Church. I'm Dani from Moravica, Romania, and I remember the beautiful time that we spent together uh, whilst I was visiting Bransgor years ago and uh, I'm thinking of you, at you, these days uh, hard days for the entire world and I pray that God will keep you safe and uh, uh, be blessed and protected by God Well, good morning, church. It's wonderful to be with you this morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andy Norton, and I'm the associate church leader here at Brown School Community Church. We are so pleased that you've been able to join us this morning for our all-age service. So whether you are tiny or young or whether you're big and older, we pray that this morning you will be blessed as you spend your time with us. And so let's just have a little look, shall we, at what we've got coming up later on in the service. Very shortly, John and the band will be leading us in sung worship. Then you will hear from me about one of my favorite childhood toys, as we explore today's theme of Jesus being the light of the world. We will then have some more sung worship from John and the band before Harry leads us in today's reading from John 8, 12 to 20. Joe will then be unpacking that passage to us in further detail. Then we will have some further sung worship before I give us a final reflection on today's theme. And then into a time of response of worship and then prayer led by Ted and Jackie. So that's what we've got coming up. But before we dive in, let's just have a moment now to be still and to commit our service to Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can gather in your name this morning. Regardless of whether we're in the building or we're in our homes, we thank you that you are the glue that brings us together. By your spirit, we are unified. Heavenly Father, as we worship you this morning, as we listen to your word, as we enjoy all the elements of today's service, Lord, would you increase our vision of you? Light of the world, come and shine bright that all may see and all may know you. And Lord, we pray that you would shine bright in and through us this day. So Lord, we lift your name on high this morning and we say receive all honour, power, glory and fame. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you this morning talking on this exciting topic, uh, on this exciting passage, which Joe's going to be looking at in more depth very shortly. But this passage where Jesus declared that he is the light of the world. As I was thinking about those words and thinking about this passage, it reminded me of something that I received when I was younger, something that was really special to me. You see, for a birthday, I was given by a family friend a special set, a secret agent set. And amongst those secret agent pieces were a number of gadgets and gizmos, such as glasses that allowed me to see behind me by little mirrors on the sides here. But by far, my favorite uh, item amongst the set was this here, which is the secret agent pen. 
The secret agent pen would allow you to write messages everywhere with invisible ink that no one could see. That is until you shined the light on it. Here, I've got an example here. Piece of paper, completely blank. You can see nothing, but I have written a message on that. Now I'm gonna shine the light on it. And can you see that? You can see the message. Now, when I was younger, I thought this was fantastic. I thought it was magic. But of course, as I've become older, I realized that it's just clever science. The, the ink, the invisible ink in my pen is probably just a dilu diluted laundry detergent or tonic water that, of course, when ultraviolet light is shined on it, it illuminates. You might have seen this technique being used recently in a COVID advertisement for washing your hands. If you haven't, take a look at this. Now, that's an important reminder of the importance of washing our hands, but it's also helpful with today's passage that Joe's gonna be looking at very shortly from John 8, verses 12 to 20, in which Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the light that came into our darkness. What do we mean by our darkness? Did he come into a really dark world? Well, yes and no. No, not physically dark, but spiritually dark. He came into our darkness. Sin is described as that darkness. And Jesus came in order to show us a way out from sin and into his kingdom. In Colossians 1.13, it says just this. It says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, that is sin, and brought us into the kingdom of light, of the Son in whom he loves. This is good news. This means that we no longer need to be lost in darkness because Jesus has come as a light for the whole world. I want to tell you a story. In the beginning, there was nothing. And God said, let there be light. He created everything. There is nothing that exists that he didn't make. His life is the light that shines through the darkness. True light arrived for a baby to shine light on everyone. And Christ became a human being. 
and lived here on earth among us. Shining light in our dark.
John chapter 8 verses 12 to 20. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid for I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one, but if I do judge, my decisions are true. Because I am not alone, I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am the one who testifies myself. My other witness is the father who sent me. Then they asked him, where is your father? You don't know me or my father. Jesus replied, if you know me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Hey guys, uh, good morning uh, from wherever you're watching from today. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Joe. Um, so yeah, uh, Andy kind of briefly spoke about um, how Jesus is light is one that rescues us from darkness and he, and he spoke on that verse in Colossians where um, that God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness but I'm going to be uh, reading from John chapter 8 today uh, verse 12 to 20 we're going to kind of be focusing on some of the things that Jesus says in that and I really want to talk about um, how do we actually walk in in the light of Jesus because the first thing he says in verse 12 is I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life now, it's, it, it's interesting. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. So the first thing I want to identify is how do we know if we're walking in darkness? And the only way to know if we're walking in darkness is to compare it to the light, right? You know, you can't know what light is without dark. You can't really understand what good is without bad. So the way to know if we're walking in Jesus and the way to know if we're walking in his light is to is to examine ourselves. And in fact, in the Psalms, um, the psalmist often writes about God, search my heart, you know, uh, find anything within me that, that that's not from you, in other words. So the first thing I kind of want to say is how can we walk in the light is to ask God to search us, ask God to say, you know what, Lord, get get rid of the things that are help that are stopping me from from walking in your light because Jesus says whoever follows me will never walk in darkness again but will have the light of life and what it reminds me of I don't know if you remember maybe was it 2012 Olympics when we had uh all the people running through different towns with uh with with the flame um on on and on the torch and and, and we'd be so mesmerized wouldn't we um and we and often we would kind of I don't know about you, maybe, maybe if, it was, if it was a celebrity, we'd look more at the person than the actual light, right? But Jesus says that um, he is the light and we are the one who carries the light. You know, he says, uh, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And Annie's going to touch on that a bit later, that we're the ones who carry the light. But Jesus is the one that we glorify. He is the light himself and he is where we get our light from. Because the Bible often talks about how we can't muster up our own goodness or we can't save ourselves, or we can't even be good. The Bible talks about how we have a sinful nature. So it's impossible for us to just carry that light, that Olympic torch, in other words, on our own. It has to be through Jesus because it's his light. He is the one uh, who we carry. He is the one who we glorify, not ourselves. So that's, so that's another point is that only only Jesus's light is the only one we can carry because he is the one who gives us light in the first place. And the people that Jesus is speaking to in this pro in this uh, passage, they had a real problem with this because they saw no darkness within themselves. They were called the Pharisees. Um, they didn't see a reason for the light because they were so morally correct in their own eyes because they had it all together in their own eyes because they kept the law um as much as they could in their eyes they had the light but they didn't understand that uh being saved means to not uh work but it means to receive and uh 
in this passage, Jesus says to them, um, you do not know me or my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He says this in, in verse 19. And he also says, you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. And you judge by human standards. You judge by human standards. That's that's that, that's a convicting message. Jesus isn't just, you know, polite to them. He says it how it is. Because sometimes we ha- Jesus is light is the thing that actually exposes what's in us. And this is the first point I came back to, is that it's only the light that can expose the darkness. And Jesus' light exposes our darkness, as it exposed the darkness within uh, the Pharisees in, in this passage, that they were judging by human standards, not by godly standards. And Jesus goes on to reflect his light. He says, if I do judge, my decisions are true, in verse 16, because I'm not alone, I stand with the Father who sent me. So Jesus straight away is pointing uh, to the one who sent him. And he's straight away saying to these Pharisees, hey, you're, what you're doing is, is, is within yourself. You're judging, what's, you're judging me by what is within yourself, which is darkness. Now, that's convicting. That is convicting because we think, you know what? If there's darkness in me, there's a light that's coming to search it out. And sometimes we don't like that feeling. But the only way to walk in the light of Jesus, is to let him expose that darkness within us. So how do we get this light? Well, let God search your heart. Ask God to search your heart. Uh, Earlier on in John, in John chapter 3, John says this, and I just always think this is so profound. He says, he must increase and I must decrease. So in other words, he must become greater, I must become less. And, and it's like this image of as we pour ourselves out and, and give that all to God and say, search me, Lord, he pours his light in. And this is the beauty of the gospel, is that it's not about us trying to tr- trying to get our own light. But it's about Jesus saying, you know what, I've done the work for you because I know you couldn't do that. But the Bible says that we are dead in sin. We are dead in sin. And that's a really really horrible thing to think about if we didn't have a saviour dead in sin but Jesus did what we can do and a great example of of a group of people that did this in the bible were the Israelites God chose the nation of Israel to be his prized possession his holy people he says that in Deuteronomy chapter 14 he says that you are my people so God has called them he has set them apart he says out of all the nations of the earth I have called you you are my people and God's been so kind to them. He led them out of slavery in Egypt. You probably know the story of uh, the Israelites being under slavery under Pharaoh and Moses split the sea by the power of God. But the Israelites, they, you know, they know this truth that they are God's people, right? But they still turn their back and they walk in their darkness. You know, they, 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 wor- they make a golden calf to worship instead of worshipping God. They complain. They say, we want to go back to Egypt. We want to go back to slavery. You know, what a comparison. We want to go back to slavery. So, so they insult God. They go back to their darkness. Now, what's, what, what is the moral of this lesson? Is that by ourselves, we cannot walk in light. And that we, are set, we ourselves are not the light. But we are the ones who testify to the light. And in fact, John says this himself. He says that he is not the light, but he is the one who testifies to the light. And Andy's going to touch on that a bit more later. But but here, here's what I want you to grasp today, friends, is that Jesus's light exposes our darkness and Jesus's love calls out sin. Jesus calls out sin within us, not because he hates us, but because he loves us, because he wants to see us soar. He wants to see us walk with God. And he wants to see us decrease as he increases. So my question and my challenge for you today is, are you letting God into your darkness? And your darkness could be anything. I, for me, my darkness um, was, was social media. Sometimes still is social media. My darkness could be anything that just shuts God out and shuts his light out. It doesn't have to be this Israelite thing where you where you worship a golden calf, but we do have idols that we make. And an idol is something that we that we put before God, something that we put on a pedestal. And my, and my challenge for you today and what I really, really encourage you to ask God today is just to say, hey, God. You are the light. I'm, I, I'm a testimony to that light. 
but Father, would you show me the things within me that I need to bring to you? And like Jesus says in verse 12 in this passage, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of life, friends. What a promise that is. And that you're never going to walk in darkness again. But that light's not from us. It's from Jesus. So I want to challenge you today to ask God, help me to walk in this light. Because it is only by a work of the Holy Spirit that we can follow Jesus. We are dead in sin, but now by the power of the Holy Spirit and the work of the cross, we are alive in Christ. And that is the best news that we're ever going to hear. That is the best news we're ever going to hear. We can't be the light ourselves. And that is what grace is, that we can't earn it ourselves, but we can only receive. And that is so different to what the world says. It's so different to karma. Karma is everything you do deserve, right? You know, and, and, and if, if karma was true, then that means we would get that darkness. We would get that. But God says grace is the complete opposite. It's what you don't deserve. My son did it for you. My son took your place. My son lived the life that you, that you couldn't live and died the death that you should have. I want to repeat that again. Jesus lived the life. We couldn't live, but died the death we should have. He took our place. He is the light. And the way to walk in that light is to ask God to search us, then to bring it to him and to say, God, give me strength to follow your son. Thank you, Jesus, for being the light. And remember that his light is greater than any darkness. His light overcame the Pharisees' darkness in this passage. His light overcame the darkness of Satan. His light overcame the darkness of ourselves and his light's not ever going to stop shining. God's not planning on stopping anytime soon. And and Galatians even says that we have been crucified with Christ. That old person, that old darkness, when we come to Jesus, is hung on the cross with him. And when we walk in this light, we can we can say to others, hey, look, I have a light in me now. And that dark old self is hung on the cross with my saviour. Not because of a work of me, but because of a work of Jesus. What good news. The best news that you don't have to earn this light. Jesus has done it for you. So let him bless you with that today. Ask God, where can I let you in? What things are dark in me? And let me give them to you. I hope this message blesses you guys and I hope to see you soon. Peace. Oh,
is it with fireworks and bonfires and light shows? They're just completely mesmerizing, aren't they? Recently, we sat in the garden, had a little wood burner going, and I was just captivated by the flames in the fire. I was mesmerized by the lights. But more recently, I've been captivated and mesmerized by a different type of light source, a light source that's at the depths of the sea. Yeah, some of you might know what I'm talking about, but if you don't, take a look at this. Light in the darkness attracts. And Jesus declared that he is the light to the world in the midst of this darkness. Now, for some, Jesus was a light that they were drawn to like a moth to a light bulb. But for others, like the Pharisees, Jesus was a light that they wanted to put out because he was exposing the darkness in their hearts. Jesus was clear, though, that if we want to come out of darkness, that we need to accept him as the light that's going to lead us out of that darkness. Jesus was the only way that we would come out of our darkness of sin and enter into light in his kingdom, into a right relationship with him. Do you remember earlier my little pen and my paper? When Jesus comes and shines his light on us, in our darkness, it reveals our sin. But when we accept Jesus as the light that will lead us out of that sin, out of darkness, well, then he leads us into his kingdom. Yes, as he calls us his child. We go from being an enemy of God to being a child of God, a friend of God. And so now as those who have put our trust in that great light, Jesus calls us to be a light unto others, to be like stars that shine bright in the sky that might point the way to Jesus. A bit like these jellyfish, though, that, that light is not something we create. It, it shines deep within us. It, it is actually Christ by his Holy Spirit living in us that enables us to be those lights. That he is indwelling within us and he is shining in and through us to others. And so as we come to a close now and enter into our time of response in this final song and prayer, Let's remember all that we've heard this morning, that Jesus is the light of the world. That when we put our trust in him, we come out of darkness and we come into the kingdom of the son in whom he loves. And that in that place, he calls us to be a light unto other people. So let's sing together now, shine. We will shine like stars in the universe.
Heavenly Father, we pray that you would open our ears, Lord, to hear from you. You are the light. May we not be distracted from your purposes. Help us to beware the intrusions of the world, Lord. Help us by following your teaching so that we don't judge by our own standards, but model our love and our patience on you, Lord. Help us to surrender more of ourselves to you, Lord. Thank you for revealing to us your light. Thank you for the freedom you have offered us. Freed us freedom from our anxieties. Freedom from working out our plans. Help us, Lord, to surrender more to your plans. To your timing to your purposes, to a greater focus on you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our togetherness that we can share, support and love for each other. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the gift of light, for Jesus, the light of the world. 
You tell us that you, our Father, know the things we have need of before we ask. You have told us that you are with us always, even unto the end of the age. Help us to understand and to truly believe that no matter what each day brings, you are present with us, that the light of Jesus shines on us and through us. In days of joy or sadness, sickness or health, success or failure, in days of plenty or of want, in times of hope or despair, you are there. We thank you, Jesus, that your light shines in the darkest place and through the darkest times. Forgive us, Lord, for doubting your presence, for ignoring your ways and not listening to that still, small voice. No matter what happens today or tomorrow or in weeks and years to come, you, Lord God, are walking beside us, strengthening us, loving us, filling us with faith, hope and love. We hold up to your mercy and grace those amongst us who are struggling and anxious about their health or the health of loved ones, about relationship or family difficulties, about financial and employment concerns and their future or about their walk with you. Enfold them with quiet serenity and security. Let their afflictions, fears and anxieties begin to fade away and fill them with your peace and love. No matter what each day brings, you are present with us. Help us feel that presence and rejoice in you. Let us be the light that shines in the darkness and fear of our world. We can bear up in any setting or circumstance because we know you, the Lord of all creation and time, is at hand and with us. Your way is perfect, Lord. Help us to trust your will for us and to say with grateful hearts, your will be done. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank you so much for joining with us this morning and we pray you have been really blessed by today's service. Just a reminder that uh, if you want to come and watch with others, you still can do that uh, week after week by booking online. And also just a quick reminder as well that there's an opportunity to connect with others in the life of the church over Zoom after this meeting. You can do that by pressing the connect button at the top of your screen. Well, it's been, as I said, it's been great to be together this morning and we really pray that as you go into this week that you will be those who shine like stars, shine out Jesus into this world, bringing that message of good news to those that you come into contact with. Have a blessed week and be a blessing to those around you. Take care. Bye.